Hey everybody, this is Matt. I'm the, uh, I don't know, the head guy or whatever. I don't know what they call me. Um, I'm the roaster slash owner slash operator over here at Khalil Coffee and we had a heck of a revelation today. Um, I have a Giesen W6. I got this thing in uh, 2015, 2016-ish. And uh, I've been roasting on it for quite some time. I think we're at like, uh, let's actually see here. Um, completed roast. We have done 1,632 roast on this thing. And um, today I have been struggling with, um, I've been struggling with the thermocouple on this thing being in this location right there for the last forever. Um, well, as you can see with the thermocouple being right there, every time you pull out the trier, it sucks in air. Now you guys have all seen that before, right? Um, you guys have all seen that, but I'm going to do the lighter trick for you here. But, um, so every time you pull out the trier, it sucks in, it sucks in air. So you see how it's bending the flame. You can imagine what it does to the thermocouple. So every time I pulled out the trier, I would totally and completely lose my temperature reading on my Cropster. And you guys are all familiar with Cropster or Artisan or whatever you use. But uh, let me pull up this last roast profile and uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, give me just a second here. Uh, sorry, I'm using the headphones right now because I've got a batch of coffee cooling that I just uh, finished up. Um, trying to do a little bit of a test run to see how this, uh, how this new thermocouple positioning works out being right there. Um, so here's the bean temp in the blue. And then here's my rate of rise for the bean temp here. So this is the first roast we ever did with the new uh, positioning of the thermocouple. And you can see a market change in um, the, um, whatever they, whatever the turning point uh, temperature and a market change in the uh, rate of rise. It actually went up to almost uh, I think it was like 18 um, and, and we sample every 30 seconds. I think that that should make sense to everybody, but um, uh, maybe we're sampling. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. Um, I'd have to look at my specs, but um, yeah, so major changes. But the coolest thing about this is that every time that I pulled the trier out during the roast, I didn't lose any of my specs. So in the past when I would do these roast, I would lose a lot of my uh, information. I'm trying to show you a, uh, a comparison of before and after um, because basically in the past what I've been doing is just not using the trier. Um, so that whole artisanal approach to roasting, I unfortunately wasn't able to do because I need it to maintain consistency. Um, so I learned to roast by the numbers only. It's really the only thing that I was able to do was roast by what I was seeing. Um, but um, evidently what I was seeing wasn't exactly what was articulating in the drum because let's go back to it. When the thermocouple was up here, I was, I don't know, maybe this is just a hypothesis, but I was maybe getting like a pseudo air and bean temperature because I mean, really, the, I usually fill this thing with 12.2 uh, pounds of coffee. Um, so, you know, the majority of the thermocouple was probably immersed in the um, bean pile, but, you know, maybe not. And I definitely couldn't do half batches. So sometimes I'd have a really special coffee like we just had this Kenya and I had to do full batches because I couldn't do a half batch. Like this machine says you can do, I think down to, I want to say you can do one kilo on this machine, but we can never pull that off because the thermocouple again was so high up in the bean pile that we weren't getting an accurate reading. So, um, Basically what I'm saying here, people, is I made the change and it um, seems to have made a world of difference, at least in the um, objective um, graphical data that's coming through on Cropster. Compare of all of our um, past Guatemala espresso profiles. Don't hate because we weren't that consistent, but um, 
this is the last one. So this is the one that we just did. So if I take away the one I just did, that's, that's how we rolled in the past. Now this is with the change. Now let's see if any of these things have a bunch of bumps in it from all the trier pulls. I don't really see any because I was obviously roasting for production here, so I didn't really want to mess with it that much. But um, just trust me, every time I pulled the trier out, it dropped the rate of rise down and then it'd have to catch back up. So I never had really good um, objective data while I was roasting. So anyway, um, I'm rambling at this point now, but um, what I'm getting at here is um, if you have a Giesen W6 or even a W15, um, that was produced um, in 2015 when they were still putting the thermocouple just below the trier hole. Um, you might want to do uh, the uh, Kaleo coffee mod. Um, it might save you. It might help you out a little bit. Um, DM us if you want some info on it. I'm going to put up a bunch of pictures and slides and uh, videos of uh, me actually doing the mod. Um, it requires a little bit of... Uh, wrench turning, but, um, you know, you should be able to pull it off with just a little bit of instruction. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and close it out here and uh, best of luck to you guys out there. And uh, that's it. Looks like we have a little bit of a dip in the environmental time.